from Udio in partnership with TSN. Welcome to episode 33 of the Ray and Greg's Hockey Podcast. Darren Gregor, along with my good friend Ray Ferraro. Um, and Ray, we'll, we'll get to some of the hockey talk momentarily, but uh, I think we'd be remiss, perhaps even ignorant, if we didn't address some of the world events, the racial war that is brewing, uh, literally worldwide, certainly focused here in North America and specifically mm. in the United States. But through all of this, and I know you follow social media closely, as do I, and we're watching the various news feeds and, and whatnot. Um, both of us always gravitate towards the area of positivity. And mm-hmm. one of the takeaways for me in all of this, as difficult as it is to watch and to listen to and to read, um, in our world, in the hockey world, is the positive influence and the voices that some of the NHL's top players are using to yeah. not necessarily provide a distraction, more to show support for what needs to change in this world. We've heard some for, from so many great NHL players in such a positive way, using the power of the player on their social media channels for good. And for me, that means a lot. And, and I encourage other NHL players, regardless of color, to do the same. You know, um, I read a book a few years ago called 1968 uh, by Mark Kalansky, Kerr Lansky. And um, in the year 1968, um, protests bubbled from multiple sources around the world, some geopolitical, um, some race, and it all just kind of bubbled over into various protests that that really shook the world. And back then, the information you got was from the newspaper the next day or two days later. Of course, now we see it on social media, as you mentioned, Drake's, we can see everything almost instantaneously. And, and that's why I think this has the, the right and the potential to grow into something extremely meaningful. It would be hard to, to notice or to not notice in society that there's racial inequality. And to your point of the NHL players speaking out through their pro- platforms, that's a, that's a great first step for, for all of us to follow. The second step is to get involved in however we might be able to, whether you can donate, whether you can support, whatever it might be. And so I, I think we're at a point where this has to change. Um, I have younger nieces and nephews. Uh, Cami, my wife, has you know nieces and nephews in their twenties. They look at the world far differently than right. much older people do. But how can we, before they become the leaders, how can we help transform what what needs to happen? I mean, it is sad. It makes you it makes you have a pit to your stomach to see what's going on. So many people are hurting. Yeah, no question about that. And and you know. The video that Jonathan Taves of the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, you know, forwarded through social media mm. uh, the other day, was remarkable to me, and and I'm sure most of our listeners, if if not all, uh, saw that video. But what struck me in that video, and it comes to mind as you talk about, you know, your nieces and nephews and the age, was the 16 year old boy in that video, and the 31 year old man who was mm. explaining to the 16 year old boy, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to, to, to find change, to make a difference. Um, so it's on your generation to find a more peaceful way to embrace whatever that change is needed. And look in that young lad's eyes and how moved he was emotionally. Man, you know, because we're all learning. We're all educating. We're all trying mm-hmm. to be better people. But that was what was most impactful to me in watching that video is how he had a 45-year-old a 31 year old, a 16 year old, and hopefully a six year old watching this going, I can make a difference. I can make a difference. That was my takeaway to that. Well, I'm sure you, well, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to put any words in anybody's mouth. I'm sure it feels so enormous that what can any of us do to, to steer this in a different direction. But the, you know, I'm, I meditate every day. And Mm -hmm. yesterday, as a matter of fact, my meditation said small step by small step. And whatever we can do is something. And whatever we can, you know, put a brick on the ground, maybe that leads to the next people doing more. 
Yeah. Because clearly we're, we're seeing here that the issues are deep rooted and long rooted. And as we read a little bit more and learn a little bit more, we're all going to find out this issue didn't start 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. This has been around for centuries. Literally, yeah. well, I, I mean, I read, you know, I like to read history. I, I read a book, a, a Team of Rivals, about Abraham Lincoln. That was during the Civil War. Yeah. It was 1865. And so here we are, you know, 150 years later and things need to change. They have to change. And, and man, I... I, I hope we can all embrace that the thought of, okay, what can I do? And even if it's small, can I, can I make myself or not make myself, can I find a way to help? And, and that's what I hope we can all do. Yeah. Yeah. Look in the mirror and make the world a better place. A hundred percent agree with that. Uh, we're going to lighten things up here on the rain Riggs podcast with uh, TSN host, James Duffy, no. who will join us shortly. I mean, there are so many areas that we we're going to take this um, because above all else, I mean, James is, I mean, I would argue he's the best in the world at, at, at what he does. And you've been there shoulder to shoulder with him so many times that, you know, you probably echo those sentiments, but he's yeah. one of the best qualities of James Duthie is he doesn't take himself too seriously. And, and if he is the, the center of the joke, then that's fine. He's happy with that uh happy with it will run with it he's also super creative and smart like when something happens um in a live broadcast your band leader has to be able to adjust to whatever's going on and it never looks like james has anything going on because he's so smooth with whatever the the stumble might be or the technological yeah. blip might be <laughs> And he's funny and he's disorganized and he's chaotic and he is just awesome at what he does. <laughs> All right. We've got Jimmy Duthie coming up on the podcast. Uh, we've got Ask Green Riggs Anything. That's going to become a popular segment. So that will be following the, the Duthie interview. Uh, a reminder, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, we do have a Rain Riggs Hockey Podcast YouTube channel. So episode 32 featuring... NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman is there, and we'll have episode 33 downloaded in the not-too-distant future. By the way, if you're interested in partnering with us here on the podcast, you can check out our website, uh, rayandregs.com, and fill out the sponsorship information there. Our interview with James Duthie is coming up next, and it's presented by our pals at coolbet.co, the free-to-play sports and casino games website. Sports, lots of talk, sports starting to come back. As they are returning to play, you can still enjoy trying out all the biggest, best casino games. We're, we're talking about the old faithfuls, roulette, poker, Ray's favorite, blackjack, slots. That's there too. They're all free to play at coolbet.co. You must be 19 and Coolbet reminds you, stay cool and always bet responsible. So, Ray, a few weeks ago, uh, we teased on the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast that we were going to have someone big, you know, a mover, a shaker, an international celebrity, a man of the people, if you will. And it turned out to be Commissioner Gary Bettman. That's who we were talking about. But I teased it a few weeks ago that it was, in yeah. fact, TSN's James Duffy. So the option of fair play has been embraced, and we do have James Duffy now on the podcast. James, how are you doing, my friend? Is everything okay? You look nicely quaffed, cleanly yeah. shaved. About to do um, the quiz. Got yeah. hair product in, which is a rarity, yeah. except on quiz and insider trading days. I have mm -hmm. a fresh shirt on. I will be putting a jacket on shortly. But I just want to say, what a get for you guys. I know when you guys started the uh, <laughs> Bubbles and What's Bug and Ray podcast or whatever it's called uh, last year, yeah. that you made a list. Who can we get to boost this thing? If we could only get Duffy... And it took you to go through my people, what, eight months now you've been doing this thing. You went through every player in the league. You've had every staff member at TSN on. 
You've had Rennie, the cameraman, and uh, the gravy boss guy from the cafeteria. Most of the makeup <laughs> artists. And you finally got to me. Well, it was that last award that you picked up just a couple of months ago. We thought we. Yeah. I, oh. I don't display mine behind me like that. Oh, As you so saw when we did our big good. hockey uh, group chat, there's not enough room in the shot. How many of these do you actually have? Is it is it double digits now? Right, exactly. the... I, I don't count. Eight. 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 You know, the, the one thing that amazed me, like when I came to TSN, um, of course, was like how good you, not that, how good you were on the air didn't amaze me. The chaos, did, around, your, the chaos around your seat is what has always amazed me. Like, how how do you even get on the air with highlighters, various protein bars, um, <laughs> the paper, because you can't type on a computer, so everything's written on paper. Yeah, like, scribbled. It's really quite, quite a process, I would say. Yeah. Would I compare, if you had to rank disorganized colleagues of yours, would I be above Cuthbert or... Oh no, no! Yeah, he's the worst, right? There is nobody like Chris Cuthbert. Yeah, yeah. Like, why would you? For example, would either of you guys go on a road trip and carry your passport in your jacket pocket? I have. I have. Why? why? Uh, you know, Bobby Mack was a strong advocate of that, and I think okay, it has but to we do were in Detroit. Issues. We were already yeah. in the U.S. We were going to a game, Dregs. Like, why would you bring your passport to the game? <laughs> now raven you think he's concerned he's gonna forget it in the hotel room no okay so this is what happened oh, we're oh, running oh, across oh. we're running across the street mm -hmm. and cuthbert's passport flies out of his pocket <laughs> into the middle of the street <laughs> and it's like a cartoon a car drives right over top of his passport <laughs> and he runs out dusts it off and says oh no problem sir and he sticks it back in his pocket <laughs> that is that puts him slightly ahead of you and the directional yeah. misadventures, the miss I don't know, everything's kind of a little off with you, but it comes together somehow. I don't get it. <laughs> the sad thing is that I was watched much worse before. Uh if you have one, one of my best friends, uh Mark Ward, he would tell stories for days about I would just I every disaster that could possibly happen, as you described with Chris, would happen. We rented a car in Florida, went to some water park when we were like 20. I locked the keys in the trunk. There were no other keys to the rent car. We had to be there for four hours. We were in San Francisco flying home from a, a Niners game, and I couldn't find my ticket back in the days where it was real tickets. And if you didn't have yeah, your yeah. ticket, you couldn't get on the plane. And so I had my luggage open and clothes strewn across the airport floor looking for my ticket before I found it in one of my pockets. So I've actually, I think when you have children, you have to improve. So this is, this is the best version of me, Ray, that you are seeing. That's the now, terrifying okay. part of it. But with the scribbly thing, like I, I never, I don't really feel comfortable with computers. So I've always liked to handwrite things and Pooley laughs the most. Pooley sits next to me when you're not there on yep. the panel. And I can't, my writing is so bad that I can't read it often. So I'll make notes of what I want to ask or something, but sometimes I can't read it and I'll flash it to Pooley and say, what's that say? <laughs> I don't know. You wrote it. Now I've only been there like, you know, since 08 mm -hmm. at TSN. Drake, you've been, you got a way longer history. You must have a couple of favorites that are esteemed. Oh. Host. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, my favorite of all time, and, and James probably doesn't appreciate when I bring this up, and, and we all bring it up, um, it was uh, a pre-Olympic interview with Steve Iserman. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Marty St. Louis was left off the Olympic team. And it was like Marty St. Louis and James Duthie were blood brothers, like or, or just best friends. No, okay, you're life. already distorting the story. You can finish the story, but that part is not accurate, so continue. Okay, so Dottie has the live interview with Steve Eisenman, um, the executive director, general manager for Team Canada. And fairly, he, he asks mm -hmm. a question about Marty St. Louis being omitted from the Canadian Olympic team. Eisenman answers. James asks the same question a different way. <laughs> Eisenman answers. 
<laughs> James asks the same question a third time in a different way. Eiserman answers. Asks a fourth time, still nitpicking on Marty St. Louis not being now on the Olympic team. No, no, no. You stopped at about three. Okay. And then, what, and, and then what did Eiserman finally say? You know, there are other players who actually are on this team. We could talk about. And to this day, Ray, to this day, Eiserman still holds a bit of a grudge over that interview because he thinks that uh, Dotty absolutely ambushed him. I think I think that's fair. Most of that is fair. Uh, <laughs> context for the people. Uh, I did ask one softball first. Okay. Uh, the same <laughs> story. Soft, I don't remember it. I do have a relationship with Marty, but I actually agreed that he shouldn't be on the team. Marty probably wouldn't like this, but he he was close. But I with all the it was 2014 team, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, he was just one of those guys who probably wouldn't put on. But because he was Tampa and Steve was Tampa, that was the story everybody was talking about because of most of the choices were obvious. So that was the story going into the day. So I asked him one softball, and then I asked him that question, and he, you know, Eiserman is about as cool and calm as anybody. He didn't, I guess he did not expect that. And so he sort of didn't answer. He was a little bit rattled for Steve. So I did ask again. And, and then he, 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 he was sort of giving me the, why are you asking this question? So, and I did the old, like Ron McClain, Gary Bettman put the arm on him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, I, I'm just, just trying to get an answer on the question and then I'll move on. But, uh, further to that, and I'll say this, I was down in Tampa, maybe the next year interviewing, I think Stan Coase or John Cooper and ran into Steve and hadn't seen him since. And we had a little tete a tete in the hallway, which was, uh, how'd that go and, for you? <laughs> but you know, to his credit, he was—he's very professional about it. But I think he probably does. Uh, yeah, I'm not his fondest of the broadcasters. Well, okay, LeBron I'm gonna... be his fondest because LeBron just you know, oh. texts him every day, puts little hearts at the end of texts. <laughs> okay, now we've Miley all had face a, emoji. We've all had this thing on the air where you feel the heat of something you've said that you went, "Oh, I." I wanted to say that completely different. And you're like, ah, I'm a little nervous that, that I stumbled on that. My favorite with you, James, you do all these interviews and a lot of them are like at trade center. And we got all these guys coming on and you're getting information fed to you and you know, stuff and you're trying to put it all together in a, in a question. I forget who the player was. He got traded to the Islanders and you get this information fed to you. Ask him about somebody. He's his best friend. Oh, it was Chad Johnson, wasn't it? It was the Chad Johnson trade, but I can't remember who went the other way. Uh, and, and so it was like, ask him. They grew up together. They're best friends. And, <laughs> and I'm not going to give away which analyst told me that, but you're right. There was about a you know a 15 seconds where maybe Dregs and Bob were talking at the back of the room about the trade, and. The producer says to me, you're going to have whoever this goalie was. I can't remember on. Wasn't and, Robin, best, and the guy says to me, hey, he's best friends with Thomas Volkun. Ask him about that. So I'm like, uh, uh, all right, welcome. Uh, you've been traded to the Islanders. Well, one good piece of good news. I know uh, you're going to be reunited with your your good friend, Thomas Volkun. Uh, yeah, I've never met him. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good moment for me. Well, I'll tell you. For the rest of us, it was a fantastic moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jeff O'Neill was one of our early guests, James, from TSN. Um, mm -hmm. Bob McKenzie has also been on the show. Everybody. Um, yeah. Literally everyone on our air. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We're making up for it now. But on the theme of experiences, uh, I mean, what's your favorite Jeff O'Neill? experience because there's been so many live on air at TSN that uh, it's probably difficult to come up with a single experience. Well, I mean, the, 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 is there catch up on that is magic simply because uh, the, the combination of things that had to happen for that sound bite to be played, like this is a little inside baseball, but I'm uh, the Harvey's deliver us us the burgers on the set. I'm about to interview Brent Wallace because the senators have done something and Ray and Jeff are looking at their burgers. And I say, I ask Brent a question. I say, uh, Brent, uh, what about this deal for whoever? And there's only, you know, maybe a second delay. There's only a second pause between when I stop talking and Brent starts talking. 
<laughs> and the yeah. audio guy who's very busy, I don't like blaming our audio guys, I have a million mics, leaves Jeff's mic up for some reason. So that confluence of events, in that one second that Jeff's mic is up and Brent hasn't started talking yet, you hear, in the most lusty voice, oh. <laughs> he's there to catch upon that. Like he literally was making love with his eyes to that hamburger. That was like a hungry old nice. right there. I that hate to say the other one, and this is so wrong for me to say this uh, because it was no, serious right. at the moment, but Jeff almost choked on a steak burger on the on the air once about 10 minutes before we went to air. And because it's so jovial in our studio, usually noodles was in and Jeff was in like Jeff started choking for a second. Noodles got up casually, gave him the, uh, the Heimlich and he was this big piece of steak was flying across the studio. And I am, look, I'm dark sometimes, and I thought everything was okay, so I was like, wow, you know, that would have been awful if he died before we did the open or something. And then I realized Jeff was really upset about it, and uh, I actually couldn't go on air that night, and Noodles had saved his life. So I felt really guilty about that one, but the actual moment of the projectile, like the near-death part of it bothers me, but the moment of the projectile snake flying through the studio will live with me forever. That's, that's see, O O is the best part about O. I think is that he like everybody has a TV persona. O doesn't. That's right. just O, right? Like that's mm -hmm. just kind yeah. of the way he rolls around. He's, yeah, there's no edit button whatsoever. And the other thing I love about O, who uh, he's just fantastic on TV, but you know, comes playoff time, he and he does do a three hour radio show every day, but maybe he slides to the lazy side when we're doing playoff hits and the fa my favorite thing about the playoffs where you know we sit around we'll do a hit for the six o'clock sports center sit around for four hours and then do them after the game it'll be you know game seven of the eastern conference final and he'll billy the producer will be there and it'll be like only one hit tonight eh, billy Just one two minutes we don't need to do two on this game nothing's happened no i mean crosby's got a hat trick it's five four <laughs> Probably going to overtime games. One hit. We don't no. need to do two. We don't need to work for six minutes tonight. No. We only need to work for yeah. three. He had one of his most impressive feats. Um, and and James, you've been around him post work. He's like Superman in the phone booth, man. Like he gets into his dressing room when the day is over, and he's out of his suit. And now he's got like a wool cap over his head and a hoodie <laughs> on and sweatpants. In like 15 seconds. Like, I don't know how, like, is it a onesie where he just pulls it <laughs> over his head, and his suit, tie, shirt, and everything? It's incredible uh, to watch him work. By the way, uh, to uh, out Mr. Ferraro, um, uh -oh. oh boy. The, the, I love the handful it. of times he comes to the studio every year, which is like once or twice, free agent frenzy, maybe, mm -hmm. trade yeah. deadline. It's a staple for him. I leave my dressing room open. <laughs> and at least once a year I have, I keep all my clothes at work. So there's 20 suits in there and 50 ties and Ray will enter my dressing room and proceed to take all of my ties and tie them in knots, boy scout knots to everything that is every protruding thing in the room. So when I walk in tired at the end of the night, the, the room is just spread with ties everywhere, tied up in knots. Okay, well, the great how would you notice? How, how would you notice, though? <laughs> like, if there's ever been a room that looks like a, like, a, like a hurricane went through, it's your dressing room. Not um, wrong. Yeah. But I'll tell you, like, Ray has, has matured over time because for a stretch there, he was right up there with some of the best in terms of the high school antics. And, and maybe that's more professional tying your, your knots or your ties and knots. But how many of us have experienced the old, you know, booby twist or the snake bite oh. inside the, 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 the thigh, the fat of the thigh when you're in a cab with Ray? I mean, you don't wow. do it anymore. So I shouldn't remind you to do it because, I mean, my blood pressure would just spike. It'd be sitting in the back of a taxi with Ray. <laughs> somewhere wherever it happens to be and then all of a sudden you're screaming in pain and okay, you hold on though Let, let's come clean here because you know all the faithful listeners of the bubbles and what's bugging ray podcast they i think they've been lied to for a long time you two come across as these two two of the most popular broadcasters in the country uh one of the most respected insiders maybe the most respected analyst all you're fair. both jerks 
Uh, Ray does. You you will take a phone at every moment and turn the language on the phone to Mandarin. Uh, you know, usually maybe two hours before I go on the air for the draft or some major event. So I can't even, and you can't even know how to fix that. Ray will give you a purple nurple or whatever the heck it is. You're both seven. And I think your <laughs> listeners need to know that when you're having these in-depth hockey discussions and sound like pros, you're seven. Yeah, but we only do it, Ray, with people we like, right? Good point. Now, but the other thing we like about is things you can be and have in common with, you know, like you like to play golf. I like to play golf. James is, you know, a, an aspiring golfer, I would say. Um, what is your, uh, right now, like, what is your go-to gadget? Because <laughs> so, you, you are the late night. Do we take, like, could, could you, golf I, we should things. pause for 30 seconds for me to go get it. Yeah, go get it. it. Please. Yeah, go we need it. to have this. We can yeah. sing or something. Yeah, right. Hold yeah. on one second. <laughs> Approximately 10 hours later. Uh-oh. So, uh, oh, you I called it, Trace. This. this is the, uh, you heard of the, I think it's called the, hold on, I got to find the name of it. Give them some props. <laughs> First strike or plane mate. Okay. So you uh, put this belt on. <laughs> hold on. One of my uh, one of my elbow pads got cut in the belt. Put the belt on. You got this uh, cord that hangs down. Take this gizmo. This is looking fancy. Look at this! Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Hold on, I'm not telling you. That's okay, so you got you tie tie that on. There you go. So now you got. Clip this onto here. This is an event. <laughs> my wife, my wife uh, came outside. So here you go. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta move back here. Make this. You got a, a club hooked onto this thing. <laughs> oh, come <laughs> on! <laughs> you know the, the rubber thing's gonna keep you in line. Let's go back. Oh keep you, no! Keep you, plane, keep you on plane. I wasn't That's far right. away. I wasn't far off. But look at that thing now. I, I had this. this I had this on. I got the golf net. So I was in the backyard the other day, and my wife, Brooksy, comes out. And she goes, what the hell has happened to you? <laughs> yeah. And if, if that finds its way into our dressing room or, or into our bedroom, we're done. <laughs> oh, it has. <laughs> okay. So a golf pro or uh, a different, like a, I don't know. An accountant gave you that. Like, who would think? That <laughs> no, it's actually gonna... it's actually a really good device, but it's just it's so there's just so many gizmos to it. It's it's laughable. Uh, and I don't know if some of your golf listeners have you seen? Do you follow George Gankus at all on Instagram? Yes. Or? Yeah. So you know the G box there. Yeah. So he's got this other thing. So one day I had them both on at the same time. <laughs> oh, <come> on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, well, the, the other thing I will give you props for, like mm -hmm. at least you're using that in the backyard where only your wife can laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, I would not take that to the but, range. But you do things on the course that we all I know laugh Drake's, at. Drake's was ripping me on some other podcast, and he is oh. right. There was uh, I was struggling a little bit. I guess it was last year or two years ago, and uh, my pro just gave me a tip. He said, "Just do this for a week." Cause you're not getting through the ball, like step through it for two steps. And for two rounds, I played where I, it was I ridiculous. And, like carried forward for like two steps. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the lamest thing in the history of the world. Yeah. I'll say this though, quite seriously, like golf is the first sport of my life that I actually really enjoy practicing. Right. Like I never yeah. liked practicing when I played hockey or flag football uh well are those right. are those championship footballs in the back yeah those are uh that was the uh beer league uh, b division championship uh ottawa 1997 what a year that was 52 and three <laughs> uh and next to that 2001 ontario level c provincial champions uh mvp i i don't like to talk about it which one did you break your finger in that you came to work with your finger in a cast I still can't i still can't bend it oh, past here man you you it's and almost Tom heroic Brady. that i'm, I'm yeah. able to go <laughs> Yeah, it should be a it should be one of those Jordan docks, like ten tracks. Ten tracks. What's your favorite injury? Was it the finger or when he pulled his hamstring when he came in? That was my favorite. Uh, yeah, I, I I'd lean towards the finger because 
the apparatus that he wore on that finger for like six, eight weeks. I was I like that around too. Like somewhere. an amputation <laughs> would have been easy. I'm becoming carrot top. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, let's just clean up the, the golf story here for a moment because yeah. it was the Rod Peterson show out of Saskatchewan where they asked me about favorite golfers at TSN and, and not to rank them, but I talked about O and, and Pooley. Uh, Ray, you're, you were too good, so you didn't make the, the cut here. Uh, but oh. Pooley, just in terms of, you know, as a hockey player, highly talented, but he was just relentless. And he's like that on a golf course. Like, Pooley just grinds it out, and he's really, really good. And I said, mm -hmm. James is sneaky good, but he's a student of the game, and he works at it. But he's incredibly annoying to play with because of – all of the stuff that's happening as he's trying to practice <laughs> while he plays. And I told the story that he just uh, exemplified there of, of stepping through. Now, the full truth, I, didn't, I wasn't actually out there with him. I got that second hand from the guys he was playing with, David Amber and Sean McKenzie in this particular round. But By the way, was, Sean McKenzie was the one who recommended the uh, yeah. plane mate, so don't hang it on me. So that was the extent of it. That was the extent of my story on the Rod Peterson show. He comes back in rebuttal on the same show a week or so later and makes fun of my physique and, and basically called me a milk bag. And, and I did not. Talked. I just said that he asked me for a comparable a golfer, and I, I was calling Montgomery's what popped into my head. That's all, that's all I said. It was a comparable. He's got a beautiful swing. I was thinking more about the swing. That's not what you said. Mm, I can't made, buy that. No, it's, it's not. So... Anyway, fair. I apologize. I want to make a public apology right now. I, I should not have said Colin Montgomery. I should have said John Daly. Why? Because I've got a boiler that hangs over my belt. Like, no, why did you hit it long like that? You're you're you're, oh, you're, okay. you're, you're long. <laughs> so talk about the chaos of uh, look. I, I'm living. Maybe in Jason the world. Duffner. Oh, right. you're on it there. I can buy that one. I'm still married, though. Duff had a tough go there for a bit. Holly's still happy. I don't know what happened with Jason Duffner. Is she, though? <laughs> Not in the text that I get. Well, she is now. Um, you know, we're, Well, no, she isn't because we're living in chaos, buying, selling houses during the pandemic. Well, congratulations on that. I love that house. I think you made a huge mistake by doing it, but you don't have three dogs. I was just, so that's where I was going, oh, by the way. So what are you doing? Time. What are you doing with a third dog? Come on, look at this. Look at this little guy. We go pick him up. As soon as I, when, when I'm done with you guys in about seven minutes, because I have to do the quiz, I do the quiz and then I'm driving up to pick up uh, dog number three. We already have a Boston Terrier named Buddha and we have a French bulldog named Willow. And now we're we're picking up. Look at this thing. How can you how can you say no to this? Look at that face. Uh, okay, dude. who who walks the dogs, Jimmy? Who walks them? Who looks after them? Uh, mostly me. My three kids are useless. Actually, Gracie, my youngest, walks them a little bit. Um, I pick up. I always say every year the I will never you ne will never get a big head in this business because when you. Uh, have to pick up like a thousand craps in the spring, then that humbles a man more than anything else in the world. And so yeah. I do uh, basically look at, this is what happened. COVID happened. Brooksy was bored. And next thing you know, I had a puppy coming. It's Three dogs. Like, Ray, it's because he spends too much time with that golf apparatus in his backyard. Brooksy wouldn't be as bored if he spent a little bit more attention on his beloved wife. Puffy, our my dear friend and producer, he has me kind of figured out. I think you guys too. He, I, I've realized, you know, I've done a lot of self retrospection lately that I embrace chaos in my life, and maybe that goes to Ray yeah. what you were talking about about what it's like on the set is that I am only at peace when there is chaos surrounding me. And so three dogs, three kids, you know, a pandemic, that makes me feel comfortable somehow. I got one question. Last one for me, because you got to yeah. go. Whose wife, James, knows less about where we are, <laughs> your <laughs> wife or mine? <laughs> and and uh, the reason I it. ask, I'm going to give you an example. Yeah. I, I've been there at, Two minutes to seven, 
when the phone rings, your phone, mm -hmm. and you look and you're like, hey, I'm on the set. She's like, oh, I'm looking for the keys. I believe was to the garage that time. <laughs> and you give the directions and then you hang up and like five seconds later you say, hello, Canada. I'm like, it's amazing. <laughs> Usually it was when my son played hockey and my girls played soccer, it would be the arenas. It would the be, directions, right? Yeah, where where are they playing tonight? Are they in Barry? <laughs> like the game starts in 14 minutes. <laughs> you, should, you should have been there 45 minutes ago. Well, uh, because no, uh, I, the story I always tell about uh, my beloved Brooksy is uh, and then this I maybe that's why we make such a good match, because she just doesn't care about sports or what I'm doing. Uh hmm. it was uh, my first uh, Masters, I think, 2002 or something, and one of my buddies called and uh, didn't know I was there, I guess, and, and and said, "Where's Where's James?" And she said, "Oh, he's at the Super Bowl." And he said, "The Super Bowl was a football game like four months ago." <laughs> and I'm gone. I'm at the Masters for ten days. <laughs> the, the other one, uh, I think, when uh, my son was graduating from grade eight, and. Uh, uh, it was the Chicago Boston final when the Hawks scored two late goals to win. Mm -hmm. and I needed them to win for me to get home and make his graduation. And uh, my phone said, honey, I'm coming home. It's over. She said, are you sure? Isn't there one more round? And I said, no, no. Like Jonathan Taves is 10 feet away from me with the Stanley Cup. She goes, I'm pretty sure there's one more round. Um, that's so good. That's why I love her. She was well, the only thing, the only thing I can add to that or from my is the phone will ring at 10 after seven. And now I've left the house in chaos. I'm, I think I'm helping, but really I've just thrown it all upside down. And Cammy's looking for something. She'll call and I don't answer. So I'll send her a text and I'll say, if you turn on the TV and hear me talking, I can't call you at the same time. <laughs> she has no I idea I'm doing a game. And, <laughs> but, but she's running around. She's like, no. If you're in the house, you're in the house. If you're not, yeah, yeah. you're like I, I've else. experienced this. Uh, like I have personal information on Cammy now because uh, shameless plug for a book I have coming out in the fall called Beauties. But there's a, a chapter with Ray and there's a chapter for, with Cammy. It's just basically great hockey stories. And getting a hold of Cammy, like <laughs> I, I got Wayne Gretzky, Bobby Orr, Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid. They would return texts and calls months faster than Cammy. <laughs> And then you that, finally get yeah. her on the phone and she's like, yeah, I just dropped off Ray. I got one kid going to soccer. I got, I got about hey, 30 seconds here. I'll get back. Exactly. Here. Managing that machine. household is like managing yeah. a corporation. Yeah. She's, she's unbelievable. Anyway. All right, Jimmy, we really appreciate you taking the time. I mean, remarkably in a pandemic and everything that's going on around the world, you and all of us have uh, stayed incredibly busy, almost busier than our normal everyday. I know it's jobs. bizarre, isn't it? Thanks for, uh, joining thanks for Ray. having me on, guys. You know, this was has been a career long dream of mine to be on the uh, Bubbles and What's Bug and Ray podcast. And uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for getting me to me after uh, after uh, Puffy and I believe Lester was on early. Um, <laughs> Linda from up in uh, marketing, she was a good guest. Yeah. Hey, oh, and the security guy, the yeah. security guy at the front, the guy that always waves. He was awesome in episode 34. So thanks for finally getting to me. You're looking much younger than you are, but here's a tip. Um, maybe next time a shade lighter on the hair dye. <laughs> uh, it's real and it's spectacular. One billion dollars to anyone who could ever say that I dye my hair because it has never been done except for my my blonde tips at 21 when I had the Corey Hart looking. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Right. Oh, boy. All right, Jimmy. Later, Jimmy. Thanks, Good man. to see you, buddy. See you, guys. Ray, there is no way that the video of James Duffy putting on the apparatus and then displaying it on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast isn't going to find a way to mainstream media. And it's going to be one of those things that if you have to Google 10 years from now, and you're probably not going to have to Google 10 years from now because yeah. it'll be obsolete. But if you type in Duffy Golf, that little snippet from the Ray and Greg's podcast is going to show up. We talked about, or you talked about it this, uh, before Jimmy came on about mm -hmm. how he's not shy to put make himself the butt of the joke. Now, he could have just talked about, oh, yeah, I use a bunch of different gadgets. He's like, <laughs> hang on, I'll go get it. So he had to find that gadget, find a golf club, 
then put it on. When he put that belt on, he looked like a mover. You know, like when the guys move your furniture and they've got like the, those big belts to support their backs, of course. But when he strapped that on, I'm like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And then he demonstrated. It was a nice swing when he was demonstrating. Yeah, I'm and I, I, it was pretty good. So I was a, li- a little bit concerned um, because this the Rain Drags Hockey Podcast, for the most part, is a family-friendly show, right? So he stands up, and, and all you see, as you say, is that big belt as he's strapping it on yeah. right above his waist. And I'm like, oh, no, because we can't see, <laughs> you know, we can see his belt level. Yeah. And then he's got to step back. But all you see is him strapping something on. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get hammered for this. But then he backed away. And you can clearly see he's yeah. attaching a golf ball. But yeah. Now, now good. what is he calling our podcast, by the way? Oh, yeah. What oh, was he's it? calling you bubbles. bubbles. Yeah. yeah. The bubbles. bubbles and, 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 and what's bugging? Yeah. Oh, he's. A yeah. But it, it, it's it's like it's a shot at me because. Every time I've been asked about, uh, I don't, do, does he still do his podcast with Puffy, Sean Cameron, and the group? Um, the the Rubber so. Boots podcast? I yeah, think it's I on think hiatus. So. I think they got lazy, unlike us. Yeah. They got lazy and put it into hiatus. I used to refer to it as the Rubber Gloves podcast <laughs> instead of the Rubber Boots. <laughs> so, hence, he mm. calls this podcast, the Rain Dregs podcast, the, the Bubbles and What's Bugging Ray podcast. So. Um. Thanks nah, for he's a, a good, he's pal, a good man. He's a good man, and he is, uh, he is, you know, he is one hell of a host. And in any, in any scenario he's in, you know, he talked about the Masters and the Super Bowl yeah. or whatever. He can, he is, he is awesome. You know, we might have to dig into our tickle trunk and present him with a gift. I mean, the guests of the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast receive spectacular gifts. Maybe in conjunction with with Father's Day. You know, you've got doer yeah. jeans. Um, you know, we've uh, we've got beneath underwear. Yeah. Um, although I think we've seen enough of Duthie's nether region um, that mm. the visual of him and yeah. beneath underwear. All right. What about since he's getting a third dog? Maybe we could send him a little little care package of like poop picker upper bags. <laughs> hey, send those to me because when Tiny <laughs> does the business. It's a two-handed job, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you need to, you're you're not using those little bags that come on the roll, are you? I need a snow shovel, is what I need. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> All right, let's move on to ask Ray and Drake's anything. Uh, you can send us your questions either on our social media channels at Ray and Drake's or online, our website, rayandrakes.com. First question, Ray, comes from Matthew, and I think we've addressed this before, but that's fine. We're repetitive on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast. Matthew says, Ray, what's the story behind the chicken parm nickname? So let's let's start with Matthew. Uh, well, uh, when, when I was still playing, uh, I got traded to Los Angeles, and um, ESPN reached out and said, hey, would you like to come in and do some TV work? Now, I'd never done any, and they – so I said, yeah, sure, I'll try it. So I went in there. Now, ESPN in the late 90s was not like now when it's – this mammoth campus and they've got this amazing kitchen and cafeteria for all the people that work there back then it had a couple of vending machines and like really not much food. So you had to get your dinner elsewhere. There was only a couple of restaurants in Bristol, Connecticut that are close enough that you can go to. One of them was an Italian restaurant, a two minute drive. So John Butchergrass and I would drive across the street, order dinner, come back and eat it. So I ordered chicken parm, apparently like 25 out of 30 days, something like that. I love it. Well, it's a takeout restaurant. You get plastic fork and knife. So one night we're interviewing somebody, but I'm still eating as we're starting the interview. So I want to jam in one last bite, right? Because I guess it couldn't wait seven minutes. I jam it in, the plastic fork breaks, the chicken parm hits the sauce and it sprays (laughs) my shirt. And I've got chicken or... uh, uh, spaghetti sauce all over my shirt. So I try to do the show with my jacket tucked into the other side and Bucci thinks it's funny to say, Hey, what's on your shirt. And so I got to open up my jacket. He tells the story and then he starts calling me chicken parm. And pretty soon (laughs) I was chicken parm, the messy eater. And nobody knew that I ever played hockey. I was just a (laughs) messy eater. 
Well, I, I had a similar experience, uh, although thankfully it didn't stick. Um, but working at SportsCent at the time, I'm hosting a panel with Nick Kiprios, I think Scotty Morrison, maybe Bill Waters, Wilbur was on there as well. And same deal. Like it's during the playoffs. We're on set, and I'm eating a honey garlic chicken wing. And, I mean, we're like 30 seconds before air. I drop it, and it hits my tie. And it doesn't hit the low end of my tie. It hits right here. <laughs> and you can't wipe chicken no. wing, honey garlic grease and sauce off your tie in a timely enough fashion. And I couldn't change my tie fast enough. Well, Kiprios was a disaster. Like Kipper couldn't stop, eh? I, I mean, it, it was, we did the opening for the show and he was still laughing in the intermission. So I've had that experience yeah. myself. Uh, question two comes from Garnet. I don't know that you have on social media, but you, you've used this multiple times. Garnet wants to know how many times, Ray, you've called me either pal or chum. Um, and called I called you. Yeah, called me specifically. It's more. It's you more direct that at, at, at some of the, the the your followers that you engage with from time mm -hmm. to time. Yeah, not not you ever. Um, now the pal or chum came from when I tweet something. If the response is so in my opinion, like biting or offside, I'm like, Hey, look, pal, or Hey, chum, beat it. And so then it kind of took a life of its own. <laughs> and, uh, that's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of, <laughs> I think people get a kick out of it for sure. And, they do. You know, and, uh, but chum is tough to, to re-engage with when you, when you're called chum, <laughs> that's kind of like the end of the road. Like I, I don't, I don't have endless time no. as much as it it's entertaining sometimes because people will call me pal. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, they've had enough of me at this point too, yeah. which I find entertaining. Yeah. See, I, I look at, I, and you, you've, you've explained it beautifully. Beat it pal is you saying, okay, I'm out of time. Um, yeah. but I'm not mad at you or you haven't really gotten under my skin. Beat it chum is yeah. you being annoyed. I'm not engaging with you because you're not worth me wasting my time on this topic. So there's well, a it's like you're you're just not we can't have a conversation. And yeah. so yeah. short of blocking you, um <laughs> which is effective. Yeah. I'll, um I'll just go beat a chum. And then I think but then lots of times they come back anyway. And so yeah. What, what are you going to do? No, nothing. All right. From Christoph. Um, with free agency and the salary cap, Christoph is wondering if we see the possibility of a dynasty, a team winning three consecutive Stanley Cups, happening today's version of the NHL. Now, since 0405, that canceled year, only Pittsburgh, of course, won back to back in 16 and 17. So, Christoph believes that dynasties are great for sports, thinking the Yankees, the Patriots, Chicago Bulls back in the day, Real Madrid, of course. Um, do you see this as possible with free agency and all the changes that occur on an annual basis? I, I do not. Um, by the third year, you're going to have players that played significant roles on the first two Stanley Cup teams that are their contracts are likely going to be up and they're going to be um, they're going to be in line for a significant raise that they team that's now defending the Stanley cup championship is, is not, uh, they're not going to have salary cap room to do it. Um, man, it, it's a tall order. As you mentioned, Drake, it's 15 years and only Pittsburgh's repeated. <clears throat> um, I, I can't see, I can't see anybody doing what Montreal and Edmonton and the Islanders did in the seventies and eighties. I just, um, I don't see any way that could happen. All right, Ray, final question is from Henrik. Um, and man, since Commissioner Bettman took us through, you know, the 24 team format and the draft lottery and what that might look like and all those things, I've tried to avoid a draft lottery question just because it's so complex and convoluted that it, it's, it's hard to explain and manage through. But anyway, out of respect to Henrik, um, Henrik is saying, I cannot understand the logic of the draft lottery system. Do you guys? And I would say yes and no. Um, 
so he's saying the Leafs can make the play in to the playoffs, lose out in five games, and still ultimately win the first pick overall. What the dot 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 question mark? And he's not wrong, and the same applies to the Pittsburgh Penguins or any of the better teams. It's unlikely, giving the percentages and whatnot. What's most likely is Ottawa, uh, a bottom dwelling team in the NHL, uh, getting the first pick overall, or the Detroit Red Wings, a team like that. I just the more I've researched and talked to general managers about it, look, we we nobody loves it, but how could you possibly make it fair or weighted, you know, to 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 favor one team more than they have Ottawa or Detroit? So everybody has to live with it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I I would find it difficult to to say, hey, this is a good thing if Pittsburgh loses to Montreal and they win the they win the first pick that that just doesn't seem right yet. I I don't know how you make it right that everybody will say, yeah, it's the bottom 16 teams or 15 teams rather. And because those are going to play in the play in, like unless the league gets incredibly lucky and the teams below 16 all lose, there's going to be the possibility of one of these, goofy mathematical things coming up and it, yeah. and a team popping way up in the draft. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know, Drakes. I, I think I got to the point a couple of weeks ago of saying they're trying to do the best they can with yeah. a crazy swirling plan that how could it be anything else but that and whatever, whatever they come up with it, come out of it with and whatever the players agree with as well, it'll be the best that, that they can do. And, and so I, I guess I'm okay with it. I don't, I don't love the thought, as I said, of a, a team with 90 points getting the first pick that, that doesn't seem right. Okay. We're at an exciting part of the rain Dregs hockey podcast. You know why it's exciting, right? Is it the end? Pretty much, but we're looking forward to episode 34. And episode 34 yep. is a rebroadcast, yes. uh, and it's the awesome Jean Podine <laughs> interview that we did early on in, a, in our podcast world. Um, if you need a laugh, everybody needs a laugh or a break from COVID-19, the unrest in the world. If you're a hockey fan, man, you're going to love both the, the stories from you and Sean Podine, but just everything about it and, and the openness of it. So I love that, but I love the, the the fact that we've been around long enough and we've done enough of these podcasts and interviews that we can allow you and I to go on a bit of a hiatus, a bit of a break, a holiday, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got enough assembled in our Ray and Greg's hockey yep. podcast cash that we can rebroadcast. I mean, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. And that's a lot of hard work by a lot of people not not us uh, to keep everything on, on <laughs> the, I mean, true. aside, I mean, we're doing what we're doing, but everybody else that's doing all the stuff to help, uh, help the, the podcast go week to week. And um, if you haven't listened to the Podine one, I hope you will, because it's not just the stories and stuff. He's one of the happiest people around <laughs> and he describes himself. He, he's basically, he just looks after the kids and he finds yeah. it hilarious that that's what he does he laughs at himself constantly it's a great interview and there'll be lots of lots of giggles in it okay so you're on holidays yes. aside from doing this podcast and, and participating in in episode 34 and teeing up sean podine any big holiday plans aside from playing golf i mean unfortunately the world hasn't changed that much with the restrictions of COVID 19 right. so you're probably not going anywhere. No, we're not. Um, I'm playing golf three or four times a week, which uh, I'm hoping will translate into some better scores at some point. Um, we're going to endeavor to get the kids out and start exploring around the the area where we live. We're really blessed here in Vancouver. The, we have trails up in the mountains right literally out our back door. And so it's it's time to go explore. And so that's kind of what we're going to do. Good for you. Well, enjoy. It. Uh, what and, about you, Drake? Uh, what do you got? Uh, you know, technically, I guess I, I I won't be on a holiday until towards the end of June. 
So for me, more insider trading, uh, more stuff around TSN and the usual load of, uh, of radio and trying to figure out what's happening next in you know, the world from a health perspective that moves the needle for the National Hockey League. But I am looking forward to some downtime and playing golf as well. So, well, hope everybody's well. That. Everybody's safe. Uh, thank you for listening. Check out the, the bonus episode next week and um, be safe, everybody. You bet. And a special thank you to all of our partners here on the Ray and Drake's Hockey Podcast, CoolBet.co. CoolBet, the free-to-play sports and casino game website. You can check them out at CoolBet.co. Beneath Underwear, get 20% off with a code PUCKDROP at BN3TH.ca. And Dewar Jeans, get 10% off with a code RAY at D-U-E-R.ca. As always, thanks very much to Aaron, the Tech Johnson, for producing the Ray and Drake's Hockey Podcast. And another big shout out to Tony Ferraro. Every week he brings it with an excellent music you hear here on Ray and Dregs. Look forward to episode 34, a rebroadcast with Sean Podine coming up next week.